Okay, so the question we're trying to answer is how much is that piece of, uh, how much is that big piece of metal worth? Okay. So, that's the question. Probably know the question. They got a, they got this big piece of metal and they're, they're trading it in because they need to buy some kind of expensive steel. And, uh, what? Is it good from an ab abandoned railroad track? And they just pried it up. Uh, let me see what else happens. Are they, is it really abandoned? It really is abandoned. Um, so if they take in this big thing, which you, there's enough information to solve this problem from the clip that we saw. Uh, if they take this big thing and trade it in, how much are they going to get? Six dollars? No. Okay, so he hands him the spike and he says eight dollars and twenty cents, right? And this is the kid the other kid says this is worth eight twenty and what does the first one say? A ton. A ton. It it'll get you eight dollars and twenty cents a ton. Okay, so that's one thing. What, what's a ton? Two thousand pounds. That's two thousand pounds. Where did you go? Pounds. Okay, eight dollars and for every two thousand pounds. And uh, so, what's another question? That we have, Derek. You know what? Yeah, How much does it say about the section on the floor? 400 pounds. 400 pounds? Okay, can we use that? Yeah. How? If you just buy 8,000 by 400, then you get 5. 8,000 Yeah. Then you get 5. So if you get 5 of those big railroad trucks, then that's 8,000. Let's say we take 820 divided by 2,000. What will that tell us? How much a pound is worth? What's that? How much one pound? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. How much is a pound worth? Zero, zero, four. What's that? Point zero, zero, four. Can you give me even more than that, or is that is that is that the end? One. Four one. Yeah. And it stops. Yes. Okay. Point zero zero four one dollars per pound. Okay. And that, that section that they pulled up was how much? What can we do with that? Okay, so you could do 820 to 2,000 is equal to something, something x yeah. to 400. Yeah. Oh, that's what you're saying? <coughs> um, actually, to make it a little easier, let's say y over 400. Okay. Solve for y, are we going to solve for y? Okay, so multiply both sides by 400. Mm -hmm. Cancel that out. And we'll multiply by 400. Okay, so now we can answer their question, the original question. How much are they going to get? So let's go ahead and answer that question. At least. For, you got it? For 400 pounds. For 400 pounds. A dollar and 
Dollar sixty four doesn't round up. No, dollar sixty four. That's about right. Okay. I just because in the in the movie they say a dollar sixty five, so I wonder why they have something different than what we have. Did you use point zero zero four one? So dollar sixty four. All right. So that answers the question from the clip. How much is that big railroad tie worth? Is it worth a dollar sixty four? Which is a lot now, but that was in 1950. It was in the 50s, so that was definitely worth more back then. I could buy more. Um, okay, well, now let's change it. Let's make it not 400 pounds, but uh, 523 pounds. How would we change this so that we can find out how much 523 pounds? I'll just figure it out. I'll just tell me what the number is. But what would we do to this equation to change it to put in 523 pounds? Derek? You could just multiply point of zero zero four one by 523. Oh, wait, so 820 over 2,000 is this 0 0.0041, which is a per pound, mm -hmm. right? And with like with any rate of change, if you multiply this 0 0.0041 per pound, if you multiply it by a number of pounds, then the pounds will cancel and we'll just be up the dollars. So 500, what did I say, 23? Yeah. 523, how much is that worth? $2.14. 14. Okay. How would this change if we wanted to do 765 pounds? How would that change? What would we change about this equation to accommodate 765 pounds? change about that equation if you wanted to calculate how much 765 pounds is worth. Number of pounds, the variable number of pounds. What would you do with the number of pounds to figure out how much it would be worth if you went in and traded it in? You do what? You would multiply it by. Just multiply it by. amount of money that you would get for trading in X pounds of, of this steel. <coughs> so how much money would you get for zero pounds? No money. No money. Put in zero, you'd have zero. Okay. Now, that fact with a lot of others, 
is a really important uh, one to the type of equation we're talking about today. Okay. The type of equation we're talking about today is y equals a number times x. In this case, this number is 0 0.0041. Let's look at a few other examples. for your, uh, your total distance traveled for however many number of hours. If you're moving at a constant rate of 75 miles per hour. Make that equation. <coughs> if I gave you the amount of time that's gone by, what would you do with that amount of time? Say X. Any trouble. Let's start with some specifics. You can answer me, you can do it you know, by yourself. How far would you have gone if you traveled for two hours? Think about write it down and be able to answer how did you do it? How did you figure out how far you went? you've gone after two hours, what do you do? Figure out how far you've gone after two hours. Mm -hmm. uh, two times 75. Okay. Two times 75. All right. Now, let's do five hours. Find how far you've gone after five hours and think about how did you do it. How would you do that? How would you figure out how far you've gone after five hours? But, um, don't tell me how far, just tell me how to find out how far. I took 75 times five. 75 times five. And what if I asked you to figure out how far you've gone after 12 hours? 25 times 12. 25 times 12. You can see that 75 constant. It stays the same. No matter what, you're just going to get 75, a constant 75, and multiply it by whatever, the, num the, the number of hours that have gone by. Okay. Take 75 and multiply it by the number of what, what letter can we use to represent how many? X, X works fine. 75 times X, X being what? What does X represent? <coughs> Time. The time, the number of hours. Okay. And then we get done. 75 times x equals well, something else. Y. Y represents how far you've gone. Uh, right, the equation for the total amount of money you have made after two t t hours. If you're making 835 an hour.
I'll just say example as above. If you're going to work two hours, or five hours, or twelve hours, does anybody have an equation to decide how much money you made after two hours? Toby? Um, eight dollars, eight thirty-five times how many hours? How many hours? Which we could use t to represent that, right? And when we do that, we what we get out is what do we get out? The amount of hours for the amount of money. Money, okay. So uh, maybe L M is um, D for dollar. So you take 835 per hour, multiply by the number of hours, and you get the number of dollars that you've made in that amount of time. So uh, I'll write the equation to find the, the area on that vector. Finding area. Area is going to be equal to. Uh, how are you going to find the area? Let's find out what the area is. Yep. Yeah. Four times W. The area is is uh, say length times width, or width times height, or however you want to uh, say it. Uh, four times whatever that width turns out to be. Four or sixteen or twenty-five, whatever that number is, so we'll just multiply it by four. And that gives you the area. Four. Here's the area of triangle. find the area of a rectangle, or sorry, triangle. Steven? Is it one half times height times base? One half times height times base. Okay. One half times, do we know the height? Eight. Eight. It's eight. Do we know the base? No. It's just B, it's a variable. So one half times eight is four. same form y equals a times x. a just meaning some constant. Here the constant was 75 and multiply 75 by however many hours uh, you're told you have traveled that, that you do travel. Uh, we can do y equals a times x uh, where a is 835. We'll just multiply 835 times however much time has gone by. Here we'll multiply 4 by whatever the width is. Here we'll multiply 4 by whatever the base is. So that number right there is called the constant of variation. This 
is called direct variations. So direct variations has to look like that. So the open is 4.6. important in direct variation that it looks exactly like this. Y equals a number times x, no more, no less. No. So why is this not direct variation? Because we're subtracting one. Notice in all these situations, this one included, if you have zero pounds of, of metal to go and trade in, how much money do you get? Zero dollars. If you travel for zero hours, you go how far? Zero. If you go for, if you work for zero time, zero dollars. Zero dollars. If you have a zero width, zero area. If you have a zero base, zero area. Zero area. Yeah, they're both area problems. Okay. So if you have zero of your independent variable of your x or your t or your w or your b or whatever, uh, then you have a zero output. You have zero pounds, you get zero dollars. You drive for zero time, you go zero distance. You work for zero time, you make zero dollars. Okay? That's a very important part of direct variation. Number five, here two x plus y equals three. Yes. Some say yes, some say no. No. Why no? It doesn't look like y equals ax. Okay. But maybe it could. <laughs> well, there's only one way to really find out for sure. If it could look like y equals ax, what's the only way to know for sure? Try it. What do you mean try it? Do the problem. What? Do the problem. Do the problem? And get y on one side. Okay, you get y on one side. So how do we get y on one side? Uh, you subtract y. Subtract y? Yeah. Okay. Two x equals three minus y. Uh, you use three. Subtract three. Yeah. So you get two x minus three equals negative y. And then you have to get rid of negative. How do we do that? Divide by, by negative one. Mm -hmm. Now positive y equals negative two x plus three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so is that direct variation? No. Why? Because you got the plus three. Okay. If we put in zero for x, we're gonna get out three. If we put in zero, this goes away. We get out three for y. That's not gonna fly. Okay. 
6. x equals negative, no, x minus 3y equals 0. Is that direct variation? And if it is, find out what a is. A. What I mean a, or what I, or when I say a, what I mean is all direct variation equations look like this. There's some number you're multiplying by x to get y. So if this is direct variation, what is that number? Multiply by x to get y. Just like with the previous one, if we want to show whether or not it's in direct variation form, or if it is a direct variation relationship, then we need to get y by itself. And then see, does it look like y equals a times x, a to, or a number times x? So let's get y by itself. Ready? You get y by itself? Nine? Yep. Uh, you divide by y on both sides, or no? Divide by y. Divide by y. Divide x by y. Divide this by y, that'll be negative three. And divide this by y, we get zero. Subtract y. Okay. Subtract. So don't do that. Subtract y. Mm -hmm. Subtract y. What's negative three y minus y? Three. Negative three y minus y. All we have here are like terms. X minus 4y equals negative y. So we can keep going with that if we want. We need to work on being able to get a variable by itself. on both sides, that would make it so that y is at least only being multiplied by a negative 3. So x minus x is 0, negative 3y equals negative x. And divide by 3. Divide by 3. Negative 3. Negative 3. Okay, negative 3. So if we do that all in one step, we'll get negative 3 divided by negative 3 is positive 1 times y. So y. And what's negative 1 divided by negative 3? Negative 1 divided by negative 3? Three. 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 Positive 3. Positive 3? 1 divided by 3 is 3? No. Like Don't give me a decimal. It's point. Don't give me a decimal. Okay. It's just 1 over 3? One third x. Yes. One third times x. X over three, one third times x. It's the same thing. So what's a in this case? Yes. It is one third. One third. It is direct variation, yeah. It looks like y equals a times x. Not plus anything, not minus anything. It's just y equals a times x. Direct variation. 
And I want you to graph each one of them. Having trouble, we can uh, notice that each of these looks like this nice. What's this called? What form is this called? What's that? Slope intercept. Slope. might tell me if I wanted to graph this equation, how would I do it? So I've noticed that it looks just like slope intercept form. You need to start somewhere, right? Yeah. Where would you start? And how do you know we can do that? point at the origin? Yeah. How can we be sure? What's that? Zero, zero. What about zero, zero? That's the origin. Yes, yeah, zero, zero is the origin. But how do we know that this, the graph of this equation goes through the origin? Zero, zero. one of those important things that I keep uh, reiterating over and over and over is that a graph is just a picture of all the solutions. If there's a point on this graph that is at the origin, if this graph goes through the origin, that means that at 0, 0, x is 0 and y is 0, 0 for x and 0 for y makes a true statement right there, which it does do. Right? So that is a point. And 
Uh, Caitlin pointed out that 75 is our slope, so we'll go up 75 and over 1. So there's a point right there. We'll draw a line through that point. Notice that all of these have a plus zero, plus zero, plus zero, meaning all of them have zero y intercept. So they should all go through the worth. 